the question was not whether or not the Indian world would boil over into protest politics, but when and how. Richard, while he was off the island, was injured and was in a coma for over 30 days. I was there the night that he got hit with the pool cue. He was hospitalized. His medicine people from Cayuga, and along with Mad Bear Anderson and Thomas Bunyaka, brought him back to life after all hope had been given up. Before that, he was getting withdrawn already. This uh, Alcatraz thing had been a, kind of a bad experience for him. And he came out of the coma, and he was injured. He was in a wheelchair, and they brought him down to a power to San Francisco Indian Center. We shook hands with him and talked to him and hugged him. And about a month later, they brought news down to us that he had been shot by this guy named Morgan up there in Santa Rosa that ran a horse ranch. And we had heard about this guy before, that he had uh, roughed up Indian kids or that he was always insulting to Indian kids. And that day, he had done something to Indian kids. And Richard went down there, and there it is again about him being confrontational. He went right up to his face, and the guy shot him, killed him. By the time it went to the prosecutor, it was involuntary manslaughter. This enraged us. We decided to have a march onto Washington, D.C. to make it a federal crime to kill an Indian because the local authorities, they let that caretaker go. At the same time, there was other movements, other organizations trying to do a similar event. The American Indian Movement uses his death as the, as the motivating factor for the march on Washington, D.C. So we all went together, and it was called the Trail of Broken Treaties. His death fueled the activists who were part of the Trail of Broken Treaties. They found this, this tremendous energy in, in wanting to memorialize his gift to the Indian world at Alcatraz. After the Trail of Broken Treaties. We occupied the BIA building in Washington, D.C. for seven days, surrounded by 500 Park Service police and U.S. Marshals. Alcatraz becomes the symbol, becomes the, the catalyst. After the BIA building, uh, we were called to Wounded Knee to try to help the Ogallala Civil Rights Organization bring attention to their issues. Once you've seen a liberated territory, you cannot live the same. Following the Alcatraz occupation, there were 72 other occupations of federal facilities across the United States, many of which were led by people from Alcatraz Island. We awoke Indian people individually. We awoke tribes. We awoke the media. We awoke the United States government. The Congress saw that, that some attention paid to American Indian needs was popular in the country. So the legislation started. Mr. Nixon, on the 8th of July, 1970, sent a message to Congress, and it recommended a whole series of very fine reform measures for Indian people. President Nixon officially repudiated the termination policy of the United States government. The Navajo were returned 40 million acres. We returned Blue Lake to the House Pueblo people. The Klamath people got 48,000 acres of land returned. Lands that were seized by Theodore Roosevelt, who was interested in expanding parklands. Housing, education, employment, all of those things that we talked about began to all of a sudden uh, show up. Over the years, people would come up to me, and the Alcatraz ever came up in the discussion, I said, oh, I was there at the very beginning, and I was a part of that occupation. People would tell me, that you can't have an imagine how that transformed my life. We were able to raise not only the consciousness of other American people, but our own people as well. At the end of the occupation, the takeover, I felt like 
that was just the beginning of the transformation process for myself. I did become more outspoken and I was happy to join these people that were being confrontational with the system. It helped produce the uh, revival of our languages, the revival of our old Indian ways, of our traditions, the Indian Renaissance. For me, it was like going home. I right? see, so there was that spiritual revitalization for us. Again, all of a sudden, we're together. We see that we're not as alone as it appeared that we were. Relocatees all of a sudden begin to renew an interest in their tribal communities. When you're out in this society, you got to know who you are and uh, where you come from. Every Thanksgiving, they have an un-Thanksgiving on Alcatraz now to remind people still of the continuing struggle that Indian people have just to get the rights that other people take for granted. In a way, it reminds me of a flame that kind of died down but never went away. And out of that fire came all these different people spread in all different directions to do incredible work. These things would not be if it had not been for that awakening at Alcatraz. Richard Oaks once said, Alcatraz is not an island, it's an idea. It's the idea that you, you can recapture and be in control of your lives, your destinies, and self-determine your future. I'm here today because I'm obsessed with, with the truth. I, I, I want people to know what uh, the, the struggle was about. There are guys that believed in uh, what they were doing so much that they're not here today. And it's not a matter of, uh, you know, fame and fortune. It's the story's got to be told, and it's not over yet.